Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know how it is. You, you, you have mm, tunnel vision, and you know, you're, you're focused on what the Lord has shared with you, right? And um, sometimes you forget things. But I realized I didn't welcome the Internet Church, so I never got to formally welcome Minister Ryan and Bridget because they text me. Um, and I forgot to tell Minister Riley. So welcome to you, Bridget and Minister Ryan. I, I just want to testify on your behalf, Minister Ryan, that, you know, you are a faithful giver and have been, that you do give your teruma. So you have a bishop that speaks into your life. And I think the word my bishop said to this morning was he heard what you needed. He heard you needed healing for arthritis. See, that's what it's like to have a bishop that speaks into your life. That's what it's like to be a faithful tither, that you have a house full of ministers that will speak into your life and that will minister to you, not just on Sunday and Wednesday, but all week long. All week long. So I appreciate that very thing about this house. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Who? Mark Castle, greetings to you who've joined us on the conference line. Thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah. I was going to, like, you know, wonder if you were a truck driver, and I thought it doesn't matter. <laughs> But we welcome you, and if you are not driving, we welcome you to chat in on the chat, and um, we'll talk to you back and forth. So a lot of Marks in the house, couple Marks, couple Bobs, couple, hello. Hmm. But I want, what's that? No Donalds. Uh, <laughs> no Donalds, just a DC. <laughs> you know, this is the first service. This is the first Sunday of the Gregorian calendar of this year. Do you realize that? Yeah. Hmm. And how fast things fade away. How, when's the last time someone in the world that you met said Happy New Year? I mean, see how fast that fades away? That's the Gregorian calendar. They believe January 1st is the beginning of the year, and so they'll say Happy New Year. And, you know, I heard that a lot, like, um, you know, maybe December 29th through January 1st. I don't know if I've heard it since. So my point, my point is this. How fast holidays, can I say, fade away? It, when they're over, they're over. It's over. It's just, it's gone. It's done. And yesterday, actually was, a, can I say, a celebration as well that some of you may be privy to. It was, it's called the Day of Epiphany. Yes. <laughs> um, we don't, you know, celebrate that, but I thought it was worth mentioning because I think we can all take and glean just from the word Epiphany and go, what, what is it? What, what do we want in the area of an Epiphany? Have you ever had an Epiphany? Well, maybe you don't know what it is. So let me tell you. It's just like Minister Riley said about, pa listen, this is like the third um, person, so follow me. Minister Riley said that Pastor Aaron said <laughs> about the woman who gave her offering. And in a moment, things changed. In a moment. In a moment. Yeah. That's an epiphany. In a moment, in a flash, things change because of your understanding, because of your revelation, because of what you see. Now, specifically, um, uh, an epiphany is a moment of sudden insight or understanding. Sudden insight or understanding. Now, the title of my message is An Intuitive Grasp of Reality. I want to give you an intuitive grasp of reality today. You know, a lot of people live in la-la land you know, and, and dream, and I don't know if they lie to themselves all day long or all week long, but let me, as a prophet of the house, give you some insight to where you, it would be an intuitive grasp of reality. Okay. Oh, I know. Look at the looks on their faces. They're afraid of reality. <laughs> you want the virtual reality, don't you? <laughs> well, I, I'm here to give you the real reality here but the epiphany is it's an appearance or manifestation especially of a divine being 
It's a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. Now, a couple years ago, I began using that word more freely, probably than I had, probably than I should have. But I, because it was real to me, it was like, wow, that was an epiphany. I get it now. Whew. You know, bishops taught something, and then, like, years later, it's like, oh, my gosh, I get it now. I thought I got it then, but I didn't. And last night, I was, you know, I've been in this mode of cleaning my office at home, and I was going through my old um, files. I got this file, like, that thick of all the messages I preach. You know, I make fun of Bishop, but I kept, I just shove them in this, you know, folder, and I started going through it, and I saw an order of service. I pulled it out. The date was 2009, and Bishop was preaching, and you know what the title of his message was? I'm just believing God. <laughs> I was just laughing. I didn't tell you that, but um, I was just laughing about that because he's been saying the same thing for a long time. But do we get it? Have you had your moment of epiphany? Have you had your moment of sudden insight and understanding for what's being preached and what's being taught? Come on, the biggest epiphany that Bishop had that I grabbed a hold of recently is that he can, uh, you know, teach all day long, but that doesn't mean people have learned. Yeah. Whew. I can't learn you. I, I can't learn you. Okay, you know what? That makes total sense to all of us, and we can all see it. And that's a, when he got that and shared it with us, how many of you went, ooh, that's a sudden insight? And how many years have we lit this menorah and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm learning. I've been taught, but have I really learned? We all had to visit that. Learned that she wasn't learning. <laughs> I learned that I wasn't learning. Um, you know, we all had to answer that. We all had to visit that. We all had to come, with rea come to grips with reality. Okay. Because if we have truly learned it, then we're doing something with it. And if we haven't learned it, then it's just knowledge and information. Now, the, another definition of epiphany is um, the intuitive grasp of reality, which is what we're talking about today. It's also illuminating discovery. Now, some people in the public education realm, their theory about teaching is allowing students to discover. And they think that's the most um, revelatory learning that takes place is that if students are in a position for, to discover. I like that, and that sounds really good. But how many of you know sometimes there just isn't time to let you discover? And sometimes you just have to be taught. <laughs> are you with me? Now, little, now, younger children, okay, discover. And, you know, I'm all for discover, but you know, it's, it has its place. So what is epiphany? It's an illuminating discovery. It's a realization. You can have it all by yourself because it's about, it's about like something on the inside of you that went off based on what was there, what was put there, what seed was planted, right? It may be um, something that came from years ago and all of a sudden it, it, you made the connection. An epiphany is, um, it's a revealing scene or moment. Revealing scene or moment. You're probably going, I got it, I got it, move along. <laughs> uh -huh. But here's one we all really associate the word epiphany with, and that is a powerful religious experience. Okay. That's really, really what we associate it with. But you know what? I'm here to tell you that the reality of your epiphany has to be really your life, has to be um, something that is happening in your life. And hopefully it is the experience that you've gotten from learning the word, you know, but it's, it's your experience. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So um, one thing that I thought was important and there's a lot of history, and I'm not, in, not too good at history and not really into it, but um, one thing I thought was worth mentioning is that the Epiphany celebrates the revelation of God incarnate. 
incarnate, rather, as Jesus Christ. God, the revelation of God incarnate. Now, if you remember, God said some time ago that I'm in you and you're in me. So that's us. That's God incarnate. Are you with me? In, in, in other words, um, incarnate, incarnate, that's a weird word for me. I guess we don't use it every day. It's not for Reverend Bob, right? But um, it's, uh, it's a bodily form, okay? It's invested with bodily and especially human nature and form. So I'm in you and you're in me. This celebration of epiphany is the, is the revelation that, of God being incarnate, a part of. But do you walk your life every day knowing that? Is that an epiphany with you? Is that a sudden insight? Is that a, is that a, a, um, a dose of reality for you? Or is it just like out there in virtual land? Is it, is it, you know, is it really reality or virtual reality? I mean, that's, that's really what we have to look at. So uh, the other uh, piece that if you'll remember through that message about um, I'm in you, you're in me, in me, is that we are in a position, if we grab a hold of it, to do everything that Jesus did on the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Are we doing it? Uh, reality, okay. virtual reality. Yeah. We have the power. We've been given the authority to do all the same works that Yeshua did on this earth. And are we doing it? Reality. A grasp of reality. Now, I, this is good news. Don't be all bummed out and depressed. You know, we're going to get there. <laughs> but yeah, you have to come to grips with uh, you have to have a grasp of reality of where you're at so that you know you haven't arrived, yeah. so that you know there's a journey that we're going to, so that you know that there's a path of this road that we have to walk along to get to the place where God wants us to be. Yeah. Okay. So epiphany, we're still talking about it's a sudden intuitive understanding. It's a flash of insight. Um, another message that God um, told the house was, is there life after love? So after you've conceived the word, is there any life? See, reality, virtual reality. I think I used it the other way. Reality, virtual reality. In other words, if nothing, if, if the conception of the word has not produced, then it's still virtual for you. Virtual reality is a big thing right now. Huge. Now, you can buy one of those goggles. I should have brought some in and had you all put them on so that, you know, you could pretend you were somewhere where you weren't. Yeah, yeah. I see more. I see more. <laughs> Bam. People can do that with that. <laughs> Bishop, don't you love? One thing Minister Riley forgot that he, he doesn't uh, welcome the Internet church very often. And so when you don't pronounce something right, or there's always people out there correcting you. <laughs> So Bishop's always over here making some comments, and he, his comment was, yeah, you, you can, some people don't need goggles to have virtual reality. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, so you got the idea of, of epiphany. My declaration for you today, on this very first week of the Gregorian calendar of the new year is that you will all have your own epiphany and that I am want to share with you that in this year of 5778 that there have already been several and many epiphanies that have taken place let me give you a few I already talked about bishop just because you've been taught doesn't mean you've learned um, Pastor Aaron said a couple weeks ago in the pre-conference room, he said, you're, you're living in what you were dedicated to last year. Bam! Now that's some insight. That's insight. 
some of you, many of you, most of you, a lot of us were involved in the video called We Are Bam. Now, it, Bishop is not Bam. Minister Ryan's not Bam. I'm not Bam. Hello, we are Bam. That's some insight. That is an epiphany. When you were stood there and you say, we are BAM, that, that's some insight. You didn't get that on your own. You weren't told that. That was in here. You saw that. You saw that. An epiphany. You got to see it be, before it becomes an intuitive grasp of reality. Um, Thursday night, as recent as Thursday night on the prayer call, Amanda Riley um, prayed, but like before we prayed, Bishop and I were having dinner and I just, oh, this song, you know, in the beauty of your holiness. And so we looked up the lyrics and we got on down to, you know, it says, when I find the joy of reaching your heart. And Amanda, so we talked about that on the prayer call and Amanda Riley grabbed a hold of that and she prayed and she had an epiphany, whether she knows it or not. She had a moment, a flash of insight of God's heart. And if you heard her pray, you heard what she said. You heard what the insight was. You heard it. Do you remember? Yes. It's okay if you don't remember because, you know, when we're told, we forget. And, but when we're involved, <laughs> you'll remember. So um, one more time, she said that God's heart is to find lost sheep. God's heart yes. is to find lost sheep. So what is the joy of reaching his heart? When I find the joy of reaching your heart, I will find the same joy in finding lost sheep that, that he does. I will have the same mission and the same focus and, and live my, my days and my life every day to find lost sheep. Because I want the joy of reaching his heart. Now, last night or yesterday afternoon, whatever, um, somehow this came across my screen. I don't know. And so I clicked on it. And um, this young girl, 26 years old, is losing her life. And, well, she lost her life. But she wrote a letter before she did. And she said, this is one of the things that she said. Um, she said, that's the thing about life. It is fragile, precious, and unpredictable. And each day is a gift, not a given right. It's not a given right. I don't know. I, maybe I was just the weeping prophet at that moment. But it touched me. Because, I mean, she wrote a big, long letter, and I read the whole thing. And, but that was the one statement. You know, we live our lives as if we expect that, uh, well, you fill in the blank. What do you expect? And not really, you know, the epiphany of that statement to me is that each day is a gift. Am I unwrapping every day like it was a gift? I think it was last Thursday morning on my way to work, I began to pray. And, you know, I mean, I have prayed like this before in the past, but I just remember um, praying, you know, like, okay, I don't know what today is going to bring, Lord, but let me, I want to be about what you're about. I want to walk in the path that you lay before me. Show me what you want me to do, you know, yada, yada, yada. That was the best day of my year, like school year. That was the best day of the last three years, I think. And I, I came home and, and Bishop's always like, how was your day? It was fantastic. Well, why was it so fantastic? You know, he used, sometimes he hears some other things. Um, <laughs> you know, and I thought to myself, and I could not put my finger on why it was so fantastic. I could not. And then I remembered. <laughs> I had a sudden flash of insight because of the way I prayed in the morning. That's why. It was so amazing. That's why. 
So I told Bishop I wasn't going to preach long, so I better get at it. An intuitive grasp of reality. Let me tell you what's available this year. Let me tell you what God has planned for you. And then it's your decision if you just want that to be a virtual reality or if you really want to grasp the intuitive reality of it. Now, some of it you're going to um, see that, you know, and I, we've been talking about a lot of things. And Elder Christie's going to pass around the prophetic outlook, 5778. But I want to highlight a couple things. And... Um, one of the things I want to highlight is, of course, we know the books are open and that the law is winning this year. And here's the, you know, the phrase, I sought the law and the, law. <laughs> yeah, I need Reverend Bob's voice. Um, I sought the law. Are you seeking the law? Now, us women, we went to, we're going to law school. But are you seeking the law? Because the law is winning. We've been talking a lot about that. And so, you know, you, you got that one. But there's a couple things I'm positive that you've forgotten. Because listen to me when I say this is available. And if you want it to be virtual, then put your goggles on because nothing's going to change other than, you know, when you sit and still and can imagine. But if you want to come over here and if you truly want it to be an intuitive grasp of reality, then this is what's available. Okay. Are we getting those passed out? Yeah, yeah, yep. Just so that you don't have to like write like a banshee and, you know, um, it's, it's, it's right. Oh, thank you. I got some thank yous in the house. And all of you online, I'll be, um, it's, it's actually in the mail um, for the two of you. And um, so, yeah, you'll get it. But so the books are open. All right. One, two, and three, and four. Bam. I see. I know you see all those things. They're coming around to you and they're scripture. And I'm going to let you read those for yourself because we've talked a lot about them. And I did share them on the day of on the first night of or maybe the second night of the prophetic outlook. Um, OK, here's one I'll highlight. Number three. Some will open their novels and continue in the same vein, because what are we talking about? What's the reality? The books are open. That's reality. Um, and so th some will continue in the same vein. Others will do what is available. Write their own. Deacon Heath said last week, you're getting the first page of your new book. It's called Your Giving Record. I really have it done and it's available. It's just not passed out. So um, there you go. God is giving you, God is giving you one for the book, one for your book. It will be an act or occurrence worth noting. Come on. Do you see that? Is that insightful to you? Did you get a flash of insight in there? God's giving you one for your book. That means that's going to be pretty spectacular. There is something that's going to occur in each and every one of our lives, and it's not going to be the same that's going to be pertinent for your book. It's going to be a great way for you to get started. It's going to be a great way for you to testify. It's going to be a great way for you to have the perfect plot that will be a bestseller. Intuitive grasp of reality or virtual reality? You have to pay attention. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, you can read number four for yourself. I want to um, focus on, the, on page two. The second strand or the second major um, point that God made this year is it's going to be an emotional year. And like I said, the reason it's going to be an emotional year is because of how well you can see. If you can't see, there's probably not much emotion going to be going on. But the more you see, probably the more emotion that you're going to experience. And so I shared five and six with you, but go with me to number seven. Number seven says, the fence has become very obvious in its function for the separation of light and dark, for the separation of clean and unclean and holy and unholy. This year, you will see the fence as protection. Make sure you recognize which side of the fence you are concerning every issue so you can quickly see the position of others. Now, listen to me. If you can see that, I, I need you to see this fence 
And I need you to see that God does not like lukewarm. So you are on one side or the other. And we're not talking, we're talking physical, but we are talking on issues that relate to his word. You have to know where you are at. Why is it going to be emotional? Because you're going to find out that some people aren't where you thought they were. But only when you realize where you're at. On issues. Sometimes we think it's a physical and that's part of it. But in this piece, what's available, what's an epiphany for you is on every issue concerning the word of God, you're going to have an opportunity get emotional, but there's some good news coming with that too. <clears throat> so Romans 8, 30 and 31, it says, moreover, um, he did predestinate them. He also called and whom he called them. He also justified and whom he justified them. He also glorified. So you know where you stand on issues in the word? Well, you know what? You're going to be justified if you stand on the same side that God's on and you're going to be glorified because of it. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Why is it an emotional year? Because you have to understand that not everyone's going to see it like you see it. But if you're having this intuitive grasp of reality today, you know what the answer is. You know what the truth is. You know you, all your responsibility is, is to know where you stand on the issues. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Number eight, the natural will have less and less power over you because you know the invisible is near. Ah. Yeah. <sighs> Some of you really got a sudden intuitive understanding of that. You can see that. Now, just because you're seeing it right now, you've got to continue to see it. Have you ever had an epiphany and then it left? It's like you forgot about it. Like, how'd that happen? I knew that at one time. How'd I forget that? Okay, so you got to keep it before you. Keep it before you. Hebrews. 1127, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invincible. Or excuse me, he's God's invincible, but invisible is what the Bible says, invisible. See, what Minister Riley talked about with jo the life of Joseph is that, you know, uh, he related it to the, the tithes, but really one thing we have to remember about Joseph is he worked for a heathen king, but he was second in command. I work for a, you know, you know, a worldly, uh, and I, I work for a, a feral. Okay. I work for a feral. <laughs> I don't know if I'm second in command. I think I am, but I don't know. Uh, no. Um, uh, but I'm prosperous. It's okay. It's okay. There, God has a position and he has a plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so it's an emotional year. How many have experienced it a little bit so far? Mm, for sure. The third thing is it's a year of the menorah. And we talked a lot about that, so I'm not going to spend much time on this at all. But here's the phrase, you know, and I, again, Reverend Bob, I need your, your voice. Please don't let the fire go out in me. That's what this menorah is about. Yeah. Don't let these things in your life go out. This whole year, it is imperative we have to have this lit. We have to have this fire working for us. Yeah. It starts with us before everything else moves on. Yeah. So please don't let the fire go out in us. Again, reality, virtual reality. Some of you may think, well, I'm not sure if I got it all lit. All right, then. Well, you know how to light it, right? Good. The helper. The helper. Yeah. Shamash. Yeah. So... If we have to, which we're supposed to, produce oil this year because that's one of um, the ways that this continues to burn, 
Well, don't be surprised when you have experienced an opportunity to produce oil in your life. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Don't look at it like you're being punished. It's not a bad thing. Right. It just is reality. You're not where you thought you were. Right. And you needed more oil to keep it burning. So um, number nine and ten is for your reading. Oh, I like number ten because it makes me happy. Um, let's read it. <laughs> the brighter the light, the higher you will be seen. Oh, it's about us finally. The brighter the light, the higher you will be seen. The brighter the light, the farther you will see. Both are meant to be a reward for being set on fire. Yeah, it's a reward. See, God rewards those who diligently seek him. And how do we get that fire and keep that flame going? It's seeking him, isn't it? <clears throat> so Psalms 36, 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. And then Psalms 119, 130, The entrance of your words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. That's what we're talking about. If you, your epiphany this year, let's not forget, this is about your epiphany this year. Well, you better make sure that Psalms 119 is working in your life. It's the entrance of his word. What's going to bring an epiphany? The entrance of his word. It gives light and it gives understanding. I never say I'm smart. I never say I'm the most intelligent individual ever. I mean, especially when you're married to Bishop. I mean, he's the smartest man I've ever met in my life. And I feel like, you know, insignificant and minute, you know, uh, intellectually next to him. But you know what? What the Bible says is that the entrance of God's word that gives light to me, it gives me understanding even if I'm simple. Sure. Yeah. I'm okay with being simple. <clears throat> I relate to a lot of people because I might be more simple than some. It's okay. The fourth strand, we, this is what we haven't been talking about. And this is why this is going to be an epiphany for you. No one, not one minister in this house since the prophetic outlook, including me, has talked about changing the way we do business. I mean, okay, it's been mentioned. Okay, it's been mentioned. But it hasn't been what, what's the answer around it? What, how do we do it? How do, you know, reality, a virtual reality. So the, re, the intuitive grasp of reality about this very thing is we better see, we better get some insight, we better make sure that this is a, a, a sudden intuitive and understanding moment for us when we look at what's available. So 11, God is developing the main character of your book, you. Persons Places and things are all part of the plan to show you what you believe and why you believe it. The more comfortable you are with why you believe what you believe, the better you will become at adaptive behavior. Now, adaptive behavior in its simplest form is simply your ability to, ad to adapt your behavior to the situation. That's its simplest form. The reality, virtual reality. If you can't control, if you can't adapt your behavior because um, some heathen doesn't understand and hasn't been taught what you've been taught and you get mad about it instead of being able to come back, adjust your behavior, adapt your behavior to that situation and be able to communicate. Hello. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Bishop says, or just get influenced and go over on their side. That's. We are not a tofu church. <laughs> Meaning to say, do you know tofu, it, it takes on the taste of everything that it's around. It does. And it's not real meat, right? It's just protein, isn't it? Is it protein? Okay, the point is, in public high school education, I look at my students and I go, oh, I got to put a, like, I got to just like dip you in something and put a hard exterior on you. Because they just take on everything that's around them. They, and you know what? You will too, unless you know the truth. 
So how are we changing the way we do business? Well, right there, <clears throat> God's developing you. Romans 3, 3 and 4. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. And it is written that you mightest be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. You better memorize that one. That, that should become a reality for you. How are we going to do the way, how are we going to change the way we do business? Well, we're not going to be offended when we're judged. The truth bears inspection. And if you are really telling the truth, you should not be afraid of inspection. I know when a student is not doing the right thing, because if I just ask one question, they get all defensive. I'm just bearing inspection here, and you have a problem with it. So don't, so how, how are we changing the way we do business? Well, I don't know what you've done in the past, but the point is that God is showing us that we have to have emotional intelligence and adaptive behavior if we're going to rebrand ourselves. If we're going to allow him, if that's going to become a reality instead of just a virtual reality, then we have to be in a position to be developed. Because let's face it, we all have room for improvement. We're not there yet. Number 12, dead works are being dissolved to eliminate the excuses that keep you from God's number one objective evangelism. Live churches evangelize. Okay. Are you dead or are you alive? My God. I don't know if it was Bon Jovi, somebody said you're wanted dead or alive, but I'm not sure you're wanted if you're dead because you're not doing anything, not going anywhere and you're going to smell. So are you alive? Are you living? Ecclesiastes 12, 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Come on, friends. When God takes away some things in your life, you have to look at it like, okay, it wasn't doing me any good or I wasn't on the way to where I'm supposed to be going or it was counteractive. In accounting, we call it a contra account. It was counteractive. Or um, does that throw, counter Productive. counterproductive? I, I thought it was counteractive, but all of a sudden it didn't sound right. Um, anyway, it's it's not on the way. It's not on the way. right, and you think you're busy doing whatever it is you're doing, and if it's dead works, it's going to be burned up. It's going to be dissolved. Because you know what? God doesn't, God cares about one thing this year. If we will get the uh, epiphany that Amanda Riley got, that we will find joy in finding lost sheep. That's that reality, virtual reality. 13, awareness will shift from self to others. As it does, you will find it easier to connect with strangers and engage with their need. See, on um, Friday it was, I was at a local business in town, and I, you know, I was just like, I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, I, when I walked in there, it wasn't like on my mind. It was like, I'm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this person, you know, I'm going to witness to him. I'm going to find the, you know, this lost sheep in this place. But when I got in there, it was like, I don't know, just, I listened. I listened. I paid attention to what he was saying. And so I, based on what he was saying, um, I asked a couple questions. Well, two. And then I said, I just want to invite you to my church. I think you would really enjoy my church. And then he made a few other statements like, I don't know, you know, the, the, um, well, before I, before I invited him to church, he was saying something about how, um, well, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of different beliefs out there about what's going on in churches and, 
you know, and, and I just listen. I go, yeah. And he says, well, you know, like Enoch, he's only mentioned, you know, um, once, I think, in the Bible. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, my bishop has taught about that. My bishop has taught me that there was actually a book of Enoch that was not canonized in the Bible. And, um, you know, and he's like, yeah. And I mean, I, <clears throat> connection. I knew something, I listened, I knew something that he knew. And so after that statement, I said, yeah, I just want to invite you to my church. Well, where is it? And then blah, blah, blah. So connection. It's going to be easy this year to connect. Reality, over there, virtual reality. (laughs) Well, it's reality, all right, but it's only virtual reality if you will not walk in it. It's available. It's available. Can you see it? You need to pray. God, I need a sudden insight and understanding about this connection with every person I come in contact with, with every stranger. That, that has to be your heart, and he will help you if you don't think you can do it on your own. <clears throat> so Isaiah 58.10 says, listen closely to this. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity and your darkness be as the noonday. You know what that says? That says when we meet the needs of someone else, of a stranger, when we're able to meet the needs of someone who is lost, they will come to the light. They will see the light. A- any darkness that's in us, well, it's going to only be as dark as it is at noon. And how dark is it at noon? How dark is it at noon? It's not. I don't know. I really got excited about that one. Because I don't think I'm perfect. And um, wow. Wow. You know, that's kind of like brings hope to me. Like if there's any darkness in me, it'll be only as dark as noonday. If now it's not just unconditional. There's a purpose for it. So anyway, so that's number 13. And again, what are we talking about? We are talking about an intuitive grasp of reality. What do you what is God want? you to see this year it's available we're talking about the difference between it's out there in virtual land or it's right here as reality we're we're talking about God is saying I have all these epiphanies that are are so available but you choose is it going to be here or is it going to be virtual Number 14, events, relationships, and surprises, they're all opportunities to develop emotional intelligence. Be aware, practice, adapt, improve, develop. Proverbs 6.23, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Now listen. You're not going to get it right every time in this very thing. Emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? Remember, it was made up of those five things. Self-awareness first. My goodness, hopefully we're past self-awareness to where we can be aware of somebody else. That's the point. Emotional intelligence. I walked into that place of business and I was not aware of why I even was there other than one objective, get these shirts cleaned, you know, and then quickly. I was quickened with prospect, sheep. I was quickened with someone who was not attending church. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He said, you know, I've been thinking about getting back in church after I invited him to church. That's what he said. You know, I've been thinking about getting back into church. Now, where's that church at again? And um, I said, well, if you give me your number, I, could, I would text you this, like, four-minute video about who we are. He didn't want to give me his number. <laughs> it was funny. But that's all right. 
Um, he said, well, do you have a website? So I'm like, I most certainly do because Bishop just put on the tab, if you've seen, it's called New Resources and then scroll down a little bit and that's the We Are Bam video. Amen. So there you go. So I was happy about that. Good job, Bishop. So uh, emotional intelligence and adaptive behavior. People think things about who we are. And we can't say, we shouldn't, I mean, we have to be aware, but is it true? Is it not true? Is it, is it, um, you know, uh, was it something that people said? Was it, you know, was it uh, based on a partial truth? What? You know what? It doesn't matter. And you can't care. And you shouldn't care because this is a new day and this is 5778 and this is an opportunity for us um, if we will do, if we will see, if we will grab a hold of the insights of, of and make it a reality, come on, a reality, then it won't matter because we're moving forward. We're going on. And, uh, you know, I could talk about that for a while, but, you know, it, pretty soon it's going to be obvious who's alive and who's dead. Oh, that's right. Even the churches, dead and alive. Right. Let me see. Like, I really want to go to a dead church. No. Even a heathen doesn't want to go to a dead come church. On, come on, come on. But let me tell you what a live church is. And this is like, you're going to have to go, hmm, reality or virtual reality. Because let's face it, we all want to be live church, right? Well, let's see where we fall. Okay, live churches are always changing things. When's the last time we changed? <laughs> okay, what's that mean? Well, okay, do we change the stage? Do we keep things fresh? Is the, you know, is, is, is the sign, um, you know, I mean, on and on and on. Look around. What Change. Website. Evangelism. Okay, evangelism. Okay, let's get off that one. Bishop's having a heyday over there. Um, uh, okay, here's another one. Live churches have noisy children. Okay, we have that. <laughs> Everyone's like, got that one. Yeah. Um, and active youth. Hmm. Dakota, we're putting that one on you. Yeah. No, pressure, but no pressure. Okay, and we all, you know, I'm joking when I say that, but, you know, that's a, that's a need. That's a, um, that's a vacancy, if you will. We ought to have more. So um, dead churches are fairly quiet and serene. Okay, back up about um, live churches are, are always changing things. Dead churches don't have to. They remain the same. same, same. Mm-hmm. Live churches have a shortage of staff. Man, I that one's us for sure. Minister Riley's running the direct, uh, directing the video. He's um, coming up to receive tithes and offerings, and I've got him like, you know, is my music ready for my message? <laughs> He, the, the man is amazing. <laughs> yeah, being dad, being husband, yeah, minister, you know, yeah. So, oh, on the other hand, dead churches usually have a surplus, you know, of staff. You're thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Live churches are always overspending their budgets. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we qualify. <laughs> Dead churches maintain large bank accounts. So true. So true. Live churches are constantly improving for the future. Pastor Aaron's, you know, uh, pursuing, and I think um, Mr. Nate is helping him about some options, um, what's on the cutting edge for live stream and um, all of the technological things. I mean, we're constantly changing. He's got new cameras and yeah, so I'm, um, we're, we're, 
you know, Nate and I, we're, we both repent every week <laughs> about the website. <laughs> um, and uh, it's going to become an epiphany for us. <laughs> That it will, will we, it's in the working, it's in the making, you know, the fresh new website. But anyway, improving for the future. We realize that it's important in the, our society, everybody's on their phone, so we need, you know, a responsive website that is, um, that, you know, makes the adjustment to, for size of a, a phone. Um, dead churches worship their past. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Live churches struggle to remember names. <laughs> I don't know, that one kind of like mm, knife in the heart there because you know what that means. We ought to have new people that we don't know their name, yeah. that we're not familiar with, that we haven't all been in church for, you know, 10 years or whatever. That one's scary. And God knows it. So why do you think that he is saying that your first objective is for evangelism? Dead churches, everybody knows everybody for years. Yikes. Okay. A little sobering there, right? Live churches focus on people. Dead churches focus on programs. Is that not the truth? Uh, I always want to say credit recovery, but what is that other thing? Um, you know, it's recovery is the last part of it. Celebrate, Celebrate recovery. Oh. I mean, I can name five programs that are, you know, it's a program. Yeah. yeah. I, I could talk about that one for a while. But live churches focus on people. Come on. We'll focus on people. But we have to evangelize some new people so we can focus on more people. Live churches are keen to develop new leaders. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Bishop, that's his mission. He's always stretching people to put them in a place that will stretch them beyond their comfort zone to to develop the leadership skills and qualities in people. He gives everybody opportunity. I, I'm trust me, the very first service that we were married together at, which was in California, on the way to church he said, um, do you have something to share? And I'm thinking, you're the preacher. <laughs> You know, so I just blew it off. Like, yeah, yeah, well, I shouldn't have taken it so lightly um, because lo and behold, that very first Sunday in California at this all gang church, somehow um, he brought me up front and handed me the mic. I was like, hello. Anyway, you never know what I'm going to, that was dangerous on his part, quite honestly, but it turned out okay. Yeah, great faith. He had no idea the battle that I was having in the hotel room while he was in the shower, but he heard about it in church. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know what I was going to share, but, um, and I, I, I kind of don't know how I all led into it, but I was like, you know, he hung up his shirt and he says, hmm, that shirt needs to be ironed for the service. And he got in the shower and I'm thinking, well, I don't iron. Did I forget to tell you I don't iron? I mean, how did we forget to talk about these things? So I thought, what am I going to do about that? Am I going to iron that shirt? Because if I iron that shirt, I'll be ironing the rest of my married life. And I'm thinking, well, I could, like, iron it and accidentally scorch it or burn it or something, and then he'd never ask me again. And then, I mean, I I was like having this war within myself, all by myself, and he's taking a shower. Pretty soon I hear the water stop, and I'm thinking, I got to, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, and I I look around, I'm thinking, well, there's not even an iron board. I don't know. And, you know, I mean, the ironing board, come on, ladies. An ironing board for me was to fold clothes on, you know, like put your piles on. It wasn't to iron. Anyway, I did iron the shirt. 
And yeah, I have been ironing ever since. <laughs> but I found this new, you know, because the story is, I took everything to the dry cleaners. Yeah, so I have, new, I have since found my new friend, the dry cleaners. <laughs> okay, where was I? Oh. Um, we're talking about live churches and, and dead churches. And yeah, that was all about obedience and being a helpmate. Um, oh yeah, develop new leaders. That's what it was. Um, so yeah, he was developing me even then. <clears throat> so dead churches use the same ones over and over again. How many know people change right here? Like, you know, um, at their place, like they're, we're always trying to pull people up. Like, you know, uh, Mr. Nate, Bishop had him receiving the offering. You know, remember Deacon Heath that never said two words. And Bishop has really worked on him, worked on him, developed him. He's receiving um, the offering. He's praying midweek service. Come on, right? Yeah. So dead churches have nothing, um, or they use the same ones. Live churches don't have can't in their vocabulary. We can. Yeah. If you're alive, it's we can. Yeah. I didn't realize this, but um, years ago, I re it, it occurred to me that it makes me angry when I say we need to do something and someone says we can't. I feel that. that no, nah, rage would be strong, but I feel that like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, that can't be too godly there. Hmm. Um, but no, a live church says we can. Yes. Oh. Mm. Always. Mm -hmm. Dead churches, of course, say they can't. Live churches, um, they operate primarily on faith. And dead churches operate totally on sight. Live churches are filled with tithers. And every, let's hear it for the tithers in the house. Yeah. Dead churches are filled with tippers. And gimmicks. Um, live churches strain to learn and serve. And dead churches, well, they just, they're comfortable in their comfort zones. They seek their own comfort zone. Live churches have longer services. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is that my cue? Live churches have longer services. Bishop's adding to my message. That's why I'm over. No. <laughs> Um, okay, here's the last one. I'll quit. I'll quit. Live churches evangelize. Okay. Dead churches or dead churches fossilize. Wow. Like bingo. Mm. Yeah, another program, bingo. So what? what is God saying? A week ago, I, I was almost like, you know, fighting Bishop to preach last week because I had a word. And, and then like today, <laughs> it, or like, you know, all week I'm like, oh, that word, it just seems to like not be there. And it was so powerful and so mm, to me. And, you know, and of course, as a minister, there's a separation of what's for you and what's for the house and what's for the body. And um, so I had an epiphany moment here about two weeks ago, and it, it really changed me. And it changed me because it made me realize that what did I have, why did God feel the need to tell me that? Was I thinking something opposite? Is that what the house is thinking? So I really had to um, fight with that a little bit. And I came to the conclusion that I think it's for me, but I think you can benefit. So I want to share it. So this is what he said. This is far from over. You haven't seen the last of me. You haven't seen the last of me. I don't know, man. It still gets me. This place is far from over. 
and you have not seen the last of God. And God's heart is that we would get his heart and find the lost sheep and we would evangelize and we would get wise with adaptive behavior and emotional intelligence and that we would experience all that he has available for us. Every epiphany that he's laid out here is for, uh, is for us, for reality, to gr be able to grasp the insight of it. So I don't know, I don't know if you were as, as moved as I am about it, but um, sometimes it reminds me of the movie God's Not Dead. You know, well, apparently some people out there think he must have been or else they wouldn't have um, gone in that vein, right? And so one more time, I want you to hear it. Close your eyes because this is what God has told me. And I'm telling you, he's telling you that if he told me that because we are BAM. <laughs> This is far from over You haven't seen the last of me You haven't seen the last of me He's moving on our behalf and in this city and you have not seen the last of him. We've all experienced those times when God, when we saw God really moving and things were changing and, and on and on and on, but it's not over. And he's coming again in that way. He's coming again to pour out on us a fresh anointing, a fresh spirit. And if we will just look at this and see it and get some insight on what is available, I'm telling you, things are going to change this year. But I want you to know the sobering part of that is that you have to, you have to grasp the reality and, and say, I'm not going to live over here in virtual reality and make believe that it's all going on. So I hope you got something out of that. I hope you um, keep this prophetic outlook in your prayer closet. I hope you read it every single week because even though you think you know the books are open, well, what's that mean? Even though you think the law is winning, well, what are you doing about that? Are you learning and um, being taught the law? Well, you're being taught the law, but are you learning it? So I would invite Believer Actuated Music, I would invite all of you to take this opportunity and just um, ask for God to have some insight in your life Open yourself to God so that he could give you the insight and understanding that you need, that, that you could grasp the reality of the epiphanies that are available this year.